Hey there! So I wanted to hop on here and show you guys what kind of products that I use on a daily basis. Um, I get a lot of questions that are like, what kind of paint do you use? What kind of canvases? And so I just want to make this quick video to just go over a little bit of everything. So first off, we'll start with canvases. I'm not really picky on what kind of canvases I use. Usually it's just whatever's on sale at Hobby Lobby, Fine Touch or Master's Touch. Um, this is actually an Arteza canvas, but really all of those canvases are kind of made the same, so it's really whatever you prefer and whatever is easiest for you to pick up. So this is a 12 by 12 canvas, and I use these for my January paint challenge, so 31 days, 31 paintings. And they're just really good. They're just really small if you want to knock something out in a day or less. So the next thing is paint. So again, I'm not really picky about the kind of paint I use. I really like the fast dry aspect of acrylic paints. So this is another Hobby Lobby purchase. This is the Master's Touch Fine Art Studio. I will put links to all these products in a PDF that you guys can download. This is, oops. This is by no means a high dollar paint, but it gets the job done. So I use white more than any other color. Not sure why. So I usually get kind of the cheaper paints. I think this whole thing was maybe seven or eight dollars for this really big thing of white. You probably also get this at Hobby Lobby or Michaels. So whenever I'm traveling, I like to take a paint variety with me. Titanium white, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, phthalo blue, all of the main colors. Oop. And they come in these little bitty tubes. This set is actually by Arteza Acrylics, but I'm pretty sure that Fine Touch and Master's Touch make the same kind of thing. So these are Dazzling Metallics. I picked these up at Hobby Lobby as well. They are just really good for lettering. I usually don't all out paint with these metallics, but they are good for just to setting a highlight. So canvas projects and mural projects require different kinds of paint. So for canvas projects, I always get a Benjamin Moore paint, which is just a latex acrylic. This is ultra spec and this is exterior satin. You can get flat eggshell satin, really, really whatever you want to do as long as it's consistent. So just know that the exterior satin will have just a little bit of sheen on it as opposed to the flat which will just look completely flat and maybe just a little boring so as long as you're consistent with what kind of paint you use then it just it really doesn't matter it's kind of up for personal preference if you want to google paint store near you and maybe see if there's an option that's not a sherwin williams see if you have a local vendor you try them out local paint stores you get to know them they get to know you that's more personable and they might send you business. They have people coming to their business all day needing colors like this for white walls or beige walls. And not a lot of their customers are fine artists like us. And so just going in and shaking a hand of your local paint store, be like, hey, my name is so-and-so. This is what I do. If you have any customers who need something specialized, let me know. I would love to help you out and just leave a business card with them. And then that's that. You never know what could come of this. I highly, highly encourage exterior labeled paint for outside projects and then interior for inside. They're just made differently. Any kind of Benjamin Moore store can hook you up. So this is a varnish by Modern Masters. This one gallon is probably about a hundred dollars, which is kind of a lot. But if you think about it, putting something like this on your murals can extend its lifetime by years. It's made for exterior murals or exterior logos or whatever you're painting outside and so it will protect it from the sun. You always need it? Nah, I don't know, maybe. It kind of depends on if that area is going to see a lot of weather and a lot of sun, I would definitely recommend it. If you're using a really good quality Benjamin Moore paint, I wouldn't say it's really needed every time, especially for interior work. Okay, now we go to brushes. I, again, am not a brush snob at all. Maybe I should be, maybe, maybe I should try out the really expensive brushes, but for now, I mainly use these little cheap brushes that you get from Hobby Lobby again. Again, this is not sponsored by Hobby Lobby. <laughs> these are fine touch brushes, and you can actually get these in large packs of about five or six or seven. These are two that I haven't used in this pack, and this one is $6.99. They're cheap good like the bristles don't fall off in your painting i don't feel bad about treating them badly too if they get caked with paint or something happens um you're not feeling too bad about throwing them away because they were only seven bucks for six seven you have your detailed brushes you have square tip round tip pointed bigger ones just try out different kinds of ones you'll find out what you like really fast so one thing that most aspiring or beginner artists don't use is chalk uh, just using chalk before you paint is just such 
a good way to map out what you're gonna do and have it adjustable before you actually put paint on the canvas or on the wall. It's so, so, so much easier to erase a chalk line than it is to erase a painting line. So I highly recommend you guys picking up a thing of chalk. This is what, 99 cents from Crayola? And it can really just save you a ton of time. <laughs> so one other thing is a palette. <laughs> As you can see, I don't really clean mine off very often. I would kind of wait until the paint just kind of builds up and builds up and then I stick it in hot water and then it all just comes off. This palette in particular is one that sticks onto my easel so it just clamps on there and that way I don't have to hold it. If you're currently holding your palette, I highly encourage you to set it down. Another thing that I use in place of a palette is Tupperware. <laughs> So this is this one's actually really perfect. It's made for lunches, but look, it has just a little spot for water and a little spot for paint. It's like they're made for us. <laughs> My fiance wonders where our Tupperware goes. So the last thing I want to show you guys is arguably the best kept trade secret in the industry right now, and I don't know why people are not talking about it more. A projector. We all use them. Even the seasoned artists that I work with at Bass Pro Shops use it as well. It's just it just makes our life easier. So this one is actually a really small projector compared to ones that I've used on bigger jobs. But this one will do the job for a normal canvas project. So it has a special cord that sticks into the back of it that will also stick into my phone. It will display anything that's on my phone screen onto a wall or onto a canvas. We all have to learn how to draw in order to learn how to paint. It's just a step process. So in order to get straight to the painting part, the part that we actually love, we project it to really just make sure that your proportions are exact. Like we want to focus on painting the highlights and painting the shadows and just painting the overall form, not worrying about if their ears are too big or if their nose is in the right spot. If I'm never unable to use a projector, I'll just use a grid system. You know, the one where you map out and you draw out like those square inches kind of a thing. So this is basically using a grid system much, much faster. So yeah, that's about it. These are all the supplies that I use on a daily or weekly basis. And I will have all the links and descriptions in a downloadable Word document that you guys can download if you'd like. See you at the next video.